Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Pear's Pantry. Today, we're going to make one of the most delicious, indulgent meals of the summer, brisket mac and cheese. Now, I know that the brisket is normally served in a smoker or cooked in the oven, but today I want to show you how to make a delicious, wonderful barbecue brisket in the slow cooker. So, for your brisket ingredients, what we're going to need today is one to two cups of barbecue rub. Now, I have my own rub, which we'll have in the video description, or whatever uh, store-bought barbecue rub you want to use. One to two teaspoons of red pepper flakes, four cloves of garlic, one onion, two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, a third of a cup of apple cider vinegar, one bottle of barbecue sauce, and a five to six pound brisket. So for prepping your brisket, what you're going to want to do first, pat it dry with a paper towel. And you're going to rub it. Make sure it's well coated. Get that rub absolutely all over the place. Move it on in. Meat rubbing's important. Then you're going to wait for about 20 minutes before you put it into your crock pot. During that time, you can prep your ingredients to go in there. You're gonna to wanna to spray down your crock pot with some cooking spray, make sure it doesn't stick. Then you're gonna put in your onion rings, your minced garlic, your Worcestershire sauce, your apple cider vinegar, the red pepper flakes, and a cup of water. Mix that all together. And then you're gonna put your brisket in. When you put your brisket in, you wanna make sure the fat cap is on the top. Put your lid on and cook it on low for eight to 10 hours. Now around one and a half hours before the meat is done, you can begin your pasta. We're gonna need about five cups of cheese. Make sure that you shred the cheese yourself. Pre-shredded cheese will not melt correctly and can leave a weird texture when you make your mac. So for us, we used a mixture of smoked Gouda, Monterey Jack, some habanero cheddar, Colby Jack, and fresh mozzarella. You'll need half a link of chorizo sausage, decased, four cloves of garlic, half a cup of flour, half an onion, two to three jalapenos, half a cup of sour cream, one green or red bell pepper, two teaspoons of white pepper, one to two teaspoons of chipotle powder, one and a half tablespoons of paprika, two cups of whole milk, eight ounces of cream cheese, eight ounces of butter, two sticks. So you'll need about 32 ounces of pasta. Now, we weren't sure if we wanted shells or elbows or both. So we had shell bows. So first things first, you're gonna wanna boil your pasta until it's around a little al dente. And you wanna boil that in well salted water. Once that's strained, you're gonna pour your pasta onto a platter and you're gonna put about half a stick of butter in there. Make sure that's all blended through, followed by all your cream cheese. Make sure that cream cheese is room temperature before you mix it in and your half cup of sour cream. This is gonna help your pasta absorb a lot of that tang from the cream cheese and the sour cream. Put your pasta aside and you can start making the cheese. First, we're gonna chop up the vegetables. Melt some butter in your cast iron. Throw in your garlic. Let that saute and become fragrant. Then you're gonna add your chorizo. Now, you're not really adding the chorizo in for the meatiness. What you're doing in here is you're just gonna cook it until the fat starts to render off the chorizo. That's gonna infuse the butter with some chorizo and it's gonna add a really nice smoky taste to everything. Once that's done, throw in your vegetables and you're gonna saute them until they start to caramelize and yellow. At this point, 
you're gonna add more butter, about a whole stick. Once the butter's melted, you're gonna add your flour in there and you're gonna wanna be scraping the sides, make sure that flour doesn't burn, make sure it's well distributed, you don't want any clumps in there. So just keep stirring until it's well mixed together. At this point, you're gonna pour in your cold milk. Now make sure that is cold, you do not want this milk to curdle. Mix that in and you're gonna to wanna to mix rapidly and make sure that the flour mixture breaks down well into your milk. Then, add the spices. Once that is fully mixed together and you don't see any clumps of flour or anything like that in there, we're gonna start adding in all that shredded cheese. Now you want to be careful, you don't want the pan to be on too high right now, and you want to just keep stirring. Make sure none of the cheese sticks to the bottom and starts to burn or anything. Just keep on going. You're going to get a bit of an arm workout doing this, but it's going to be great. Now once all of the cheese, the cheese sauce is fully incorporated and mixed together, you can go over to your uh, platter and you can pour that cheese sauce in, mix it all together. Once it's thoroughly mixed together, we're going to put a nice coating of cheddar on top. I used more of my habanero cheddar that I've been loving during this recipe. Coat the entire top with a nice layer of cheese. Now you're going to set it aside. We're going to finish the brisket up first. We're about eight hours in right now. You do not want to cook this thing too long to the point that it just starts to fall apart. It's looking good. I'm going to see that it holds up when we lift it. And then we're going to transfer this out of the pan and let it cool down just a little bit. Once it's cooled down a bit, we're going to coat it with more of that delicious barbecue rub. And then we're going to place it on a rack and broil it quickly on both sides until a nice crust has been formed. Judge it by eye, some broilers are different, so I would say just look at it and once a good crust starts to form, flip it, put it back in and broil it again. Once a good crust is formed, pull that brisket on out. And you're gonna slather it with barbecue sauce cover all the points. Then we're going to put the back in the broiler for just a few more minutes. Flip it, put it back in, and broil it again. Now that is a beautiful, beautiful brisket. All right, we're gonna let this set for about 15 minutes, which is perfect timing, because now we're gonna switch from broil, turn the oven onto 375, and we're gonna throw your mac and cheese back in the oven and cook it for about 15 minutes until the cheesy crust is formed. Now when we serve it up, we're gonna slice some thin slices of brisket and place that on top of your mac and cheese. Put some chives on top. There you go. This is absolutely delicious. I'm in love with this recipe. I may not survive. God bless America. Thank you all for another wonderful episode of Pear's Pantry. Special thanks to my wonderful, wonderful girlfriend Libby for putting up with me. And I hope you guys enjoy. And we'll see you soon.